Hey, everybody, and welcome to Who's Who Blog Talk Radio Interviews right here on UGA Gospel Storm, iHeartRadio, Spotify, iTunes, and YouTube as well. Um, Today, y'all, I got a special guest that's on the line with me. I'm going to tell you a little bit about him in just a minute, but we're going to be talking about music and um, musicians, and they are so important to us. And the thing about music is we live in a society where music can be a blessing to us. It is a blessing to us. We live in a culture where it's used to heal, free, um, entertain, and also to help people get through grief, through any type of grief that they may be having. And so today, my guest is all the way from Weldon, North Carolina, and he is a bass guitar player. He's played for some of the um, most well-known names in quartet and in the quartet um, ministry. And I'm just going to go ahead and pull him on the line. Um, I'd like to welcome John Chu Green, Jr. Hey, Ms. Coco. Howdy. How you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Great. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. I understand that you're just getting back from Chicago and Memphis. Yes, yes. Wow, we had a time. It was crazy. It was crazy. If you don't, if you don't go to the to the Memphis uh, convention showcase, I mean, everybody's there from over all over the world. Every musician, I mean, some of the dopest players are there. Yeah, it was great. That's awesome. Shout out to Esther Wooten, who had that program and also hosted by Harvey Watkins, Jr. Right, right, right. Oh, man. I know that was good. I know I, I watched some of the um, Facebook Live clips, videos, and I saw some good musicians down there. So um, what was that like for you, too? I know I'm jumping right now, but since I'm here, I might as well go in and ask you, what was that experience like for you this past weekend? Uh, well, it's definitely a great experience. You know, you see so many people from so many different walks of life and so many different sounds and so many different players, so many different singers, and, and everybody's there just to showcase their love for gospel music and, and, and for the Lord. You know, it's it's crazy. I mean, they was about to shut it down one night because there was so many people. Yeah, I mean... You barely could rub. It's like elbow to elbow. I mean, I've heard, I heard yeah. about this. Yeah, wow. it's great for gospel music. It's really a great moment and a great time of year for gospel music. Yeah, so, so we need to speak a bigger venue for next year. Speak a bigger venue in her uh, life for next right, year. Right. <laughs> right. So you uh, buy I, even I more. The bigger the, the bigger it gets, the bigger it's gonna get. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's awesome. That is so awesome. I wish I could have been there, but unfortunately I wasn't. But I'm so glad that um some of my friends did um do Facebook Live and that was really good. I mean, some of the artists that I heard um on there, they sounded just like their CDs. I mean, it was just like oh yeah, oh yeah. They were awesome. They were awesome. All right, so I got John Chu Green here with me on the line. And tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I mean, me, I came from a small town, you know, where uh, my father, he was the promoter there, Reverend John Green, and he brought all the gospel artists there from Dotty Peoples uh, to the Jews, you know, I mean, Everybody came for if you if you came through North Carolina, you stopped for my dad somewhere and did a concert. But as a little little young boy, I always used to see everybody and how they set up, and I always liked to help the guys set up the equipment and you know watch how everything is done so so that I could you know learn everything I could. It was a learning process, and I came up in the church and my father eventually started pastoring and. We was the band for the church, me and my brothers. My mama played, so I always had music in the ear. Man, me and my mama used to play every day when we, when I came home from school. She used to play the piano. I used to go in there on the drums, started on the drum, then eventually went to the bass. I mean, it's just been a musical life for me, and I, I appreciate my parents for everything that they did. They always kept me with 
the freshest equipment. I mean, it was expensive, but I, I'd rather, before I go get me a pair of Nikes, I'm going to get me a, a pair of good top strings first. You know? <laughs> so, I mean, I always put music first. That's awesome. That is that is such a blessing, you know, to come from a musical background like that and just, you know, just be born in it, basically born in it. Um, so do you play any other instruments? Uh, well, my very first instrument was trombone. I started mm-hmm. on the trombone. That was back in middle school and started reading a little music and all of that. Then I eventually went to the, the sousaphone and the tuba. So I said, okay, this is the bass. Okay, this is just like playing bass. So I said, okay, forget the music. Now I can hear it with my ear. That's when I realized my ear was deaf. So I was I was, I would not read the music. My band director was so mad. I would not read the music and just play my own bass lines to the music because I could hear it so well with the band were playing with the tuba. And eventually, I mean, we we started doing bass uh, bass lines, actual bass lines to the songs. Uh, I was like, okay, so it's the same. So that's how I, I started understanding how to read music a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it it was crazy, but it all like hit me. And one time, once I picked up the tuba, it's like, okay, the bass. That that's where it's at. That's my love. Wow, that's it. So, so did you just um have an ear for the bass, or somebody actually sat down and taught you as a little child, you know, how to come in there and play it? Well, one day, one day. We was in service, and I was on the drums. The bass player was late. So the lead guitar player showed me three changes, the one, the four, and the five. And and I said, okay. He said, work them changes through through the song. So the song was going along, and I was changing at the correct time. He ain't had to tell me to change. I was making the correct changes, and I was like, okay. I can play about I can play a little bit. So <laughs> I stayed up night and day. I started staying up night and day right there. I mean, I would wake up for school in the morning. The battery is almost dead in the bass because I left it on all night long. I might have been playing in my sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I might have been playing in my sleep, but my mama, they, they turn that thing off. It was about 1 o'clock then, 1 o'clock in the morning. I had school the next day. I would stay up night and day trying to get this thing down. And it it just came to me, like, little by little. Okay, this is what that is. This is what that is. I start piecing my music together with, with whatever I heard in my head. My mama was playing in the evening time. I was following her with the changes. My brother was playing keys, keys too, and, and I was following him. So I learned how to follow whatever I heard. And, and that's what I go by today. I I, I follow whoever I'm playing with at the time uh-huh. instead of over playing them or saying, okay, this person, okay, you ain't on this level right here, so I I'm just gonna play over top of you. No, nope. I come down to where you are. Whatever you're playing, I'm gonna play that, you know, and and enhance what's already there. That that's the job of a bass player to enhance what's already there. Mhm. Mhm. I agree. So, do you think sometimes um, bass players can get out of hand and um, be too loud at times? Oh wow! Yes, oh. yeah. I don't know what <laughs> the bass is the loudest instrument. I don't know why people be playing. Why they playing so loud? Mm-hmm. You know, quality, quality is not loud. You know, just because you're loud don't mean you sounding good. You know, right. some some of the some of the uh, most expensive amps in the world sounds good when you turn them down, not gag them wide open, you know. The quality of sound is is, in, is important when you're talking bass, you know, because you, you can get muddy and overriding, and it's irritating to the rest of the parts of the music. Mm. And that's mm-hmm. very important that you blend and not just one person try to stand out when it's not their time. Um, All right, felt, felt and not heard, felt. Mm, felt and not heard. That's a good one right there. Felt and not heard. Right. Um, so, yeah. so um, who are 
some of your influences right now that you have in the music industry? Uh, well, the thing is, the industry is 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 a good thing to to do different things, but once I once I get somewhere, I like to you know make the best and stay stay there, you know, and what whatever situation I'm in, I try to stay with stick with that situation and not go and try to fix problems here with a different problem that doesn't involve, you know, like like mixing music. I don't I don't like to mix the music. I don't like to mix a lot of genres. I don't like to play R and B in the church or you know, vice versa. Right. Right. Now I know sometimes um I play a little bit, just a little bit, wee wee little bit, and I know huh? sometimes <laughs> I love the bass. I love the bass, and, and sometimes when I'm playing, I find that I have to um turn off others and not really listen to what others are playing, so that I can find my own sound whenever I'm like writing a song or something. I want my own sound. For you, how do you tap into your own sound? I I, I kind of stick with what I know, you know, pocket. The pocket is where it's at. And I go back and listen to a lot of old music that young guys now may say is boring or obsolete or they don't need to listen to it in order to progress. But a lot of times you miss the basics. And when you miss the basics, it handicaps you. Oh, because it really now does. You, yeah, because now you only plan what you don't learn on YouTube or what somebody done taught you, and, and your creativity level is low when you when you operate that way. So it's best to go back and get the basics and learn how to play a basic song before you learn how to do all the chops in the world. Because after you do all them chops, you still gonna have to play the song. And if, and if you do all the chops and can't play the song. I mean, you're going to look crazy. People going to be like, oh, he he played, but he really didn't play. Mm-hmm. I, I have so. been to several programs, quartet programs, and also, um, you know, just like regular programs, um, musical mm-hmm. programs, and all kinds of programs. But I have found that a lot of the younger musicians out here um, – it seems to be a lack of them recognizing the spirit and, you know, um, you know, picking up on those old hymns because not everybody is singing the new stuff. But I, I found that it works better when you can kind of integrate or combine both, you know, some old with some new, some new with some old. Right, right. And a lot mm-hmm. of times, you know, if the spirit is in the building, then those musicians yeah. are going the opposite direction. Right. I call that the flow. And and that's the flow. I mean, you got to be able to flow as a musician and tap into your surrounding, you know. If you can't tap into your surrounding, you you're hurting. But but that that also kills it it kills the feel of uh the the unity of of the band, you know. If one person is going this way and the choir is going that way, we we both you you gotta come there where meet them where they are. You mm-hmm. know what I mean, you you gotta accompany them and plan. When well, once you start playing a lot of licks and all this and on top of hymns and all that, just play the hymns. You know right. you gotta be able to sit over there with the old lady. Everybody got an old lady over there in the corner. You know that's playing that out of tune piano. You gotta be able to sit in with her and it sound like a, a concert. Mm-hmm. Like, like it's real, not not you over there just doing your own thing, or or you can't follow her because it's so simple. A lot of guys can't be simple, you know, and that's the thing about being a, a disciplined musician. You got to be be able to. It's simplicity, like like my band director used to say, Raymond Bones. God bless him. <laughs> simplicity, it's simple. Some of the most simplest stuff turn out to be hit records. That's it, and, and they really do. Um, you you hit it right there. You got to be able to accompany the other musicians that's already there, and not try 